Hey, Akit. Welcome to another video. So today we will be discussing about important topics for ICMR related to chemistry. In this particular video, I will be covering alloys and reagents. So if you want to know about these topics, do stick down with me till the end of the video and hopefully it will help you. A disclaimer guys, I'm really sorry if you can hear background voices, but that's because of Ganesh Chaturthi. And please bear with me for a few videos that I will be uploading. I know you guys really need these videos and you've requested it. Therefore, I've come up with these. Thank you so much for commenting on my videos and subscribing to my channel. So without much further ado, let's get right into the video. So firstly, let us go to the different alloys. I will write down the alloys and the composition of the same. So first important alloy that we need to do is brass. The composition of brass is copper 70% and zinc 30%. So brass is basically used in making wires, various parts of machines and utensils. Then we have bronze. Bronze is 90% of copper and 10% of tin. Basically, it is again used to make different utensils and idols. Then we have coins metal. Coins metal is basically having a composition of 95% of copper, 4% of tin and phosphorus of 1%. It is basically used to make coins and other costly idols. Then you have constantin. Basically, it is an alloy of copper and nickel. 60% copper and 40% nickel. It is used in making highly conducting wires. Okay. Then next, you have the alloy that is nichrome. This is very often asked in many examinations. So, nichrome has the metals nickel, iron, chromium and manganese and basically it is used in making electrical heaters good quality electrical wires then you have alnico now alnico is an alloy of iron nickel aluminium and cobalt so basically al is for aluminium ni is for nickel co is for cobalt okay it is basically used in the preparation of magnets then you have chromium steel. Now, chromium steel has the composition as follows. That is 2.4% of chromium, carbon 1.5%, iron 90 to 95%. Basically, it is used in shaving, bl shaving blades, bullets of gun and pistols. Okay. Then next one you have manganese steel. Now, manganese steel is basically used for the production of making lockers, fish plates of railway tracks, parts of the cutting machines. And the composition is obviously manganese, which is 14% and iron, which is 80 to 85%. So, these are some of the list of the important alloys that you should know. Next one is the important reagent and the corresponding formulae. So the formula of the compound and I will tell you the uses as well. So first one that was asked in the previous year's paper is aqua regia. Now what is aqua regia? It is basically a 1 is to 3 mixture of concentrated HNO3 and concentrated H2HCl. So one part of concentrated HNO3 that is nitric acid and three parts of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Basically used as a lab reagent. Then second one you have is the cober gas or the biogas and the composition is methane, CH4, CO2, carbon dioxide and H2. Okay. The next one is gunpowder. The composition of gunpowder is as follows. You have KNO3, then sulfur and charcoal. So 
so basically used as an explosive then next we have methylated spirit now what is methylated spirit it is a composition of methanol ch3oh plus rectified spirit that is composition of up to 90% and you have pyridine now what is the use of rectified spirit basically it is used as a solvent in order to make spirit poisonous now what is rectified spirit you may ask so rectified spirit is basically also called as green alcohol okay so it's called as green alcohol and the composition is ethanol c2h5oh along with h2o okay so basically a little amount of this is added so that it becomes non consumable otherwise people may consume this type of alcohols due to the presence of ethanol in it next you have something called as the tincture of iodine so now what is tincture of iodine it is basically a mixture of i2 then potassium iodide ethanol and water it is a very important uh, commercial product basically used as an antiseptic okay so very very important antiseptic next you have water gas now what is the composition of water gas it is basically h2 plus carbon monoxide plus n2 gas plus co2 gas plus methane this is basically the composition of water gas okay then next you have the producer gas okay producer gas what is the composition of producer gas n2 plus carbon monoxide plus h2 plus co2 producer gas is basically used as a fuel okay so it is used as a fuel water gas is used in the production of methanol then next you have a few reagents first reagent is schiff's reagent you all must have all studied about this before basically it is a solution of pyrrosa aniline along with sulfurous acid sulfuric acid h2so4 and it is basically used in the detection of aldehydes okay so that is about the schiff's reagent then you have the lucas reagent basically it is a composition of concentrated hcl along with an hydrous zncl2 it is used to distinguish between primary secondary and tertiary alcohols okay then next you have another reagent that is the felling's reagent must have all heard about it the felling's solution now there are two felling solutions solution a and solution b so felling's a and felling's b the solution basically consists of copper sulfate in water along with sodium tartrate and naoh so you have a solution of copper sulfate plus sodium tartrate and you have naoh that is all made in water it is basically used again as a distinguishing test for aldehydes okay then you have benedict solution now benedict solution is a mixture of copper sulfate and having five water of hydration along with sodium citrate and baking soda sorry uh, you have sodium carbonate very sorry na2co okay so this is benedict solution and benedict solution is again used for the detection of aldehydes so you have felling's benedicts and uh, your schiff's reagent for this purpose okay then you basically have bayer's reagent bayer's reagent is a mixture of alkaline kmno4 okay alkaline kmno4 and it is basically used in detecting ethylene so unsaturation it is used for the detection of that thing okay then next you have something called as the oil gas now what is oil gas before that let us complete with the reagent sections only before i tell you what oil gas is another reagent that you have is molish reagent 
molish so molish is reagent is basically a mix a solution of alpha naphthol in ethanol okay alpha naphthol in ethanol and it is used for the detection of carbohydrates so carbohydrate detection can be done by using molish test then you have you all all must have heard about it the nessler's reagent right so the nessler's reagent is a solution of hgi2 that is mercury iodide in ki and koh it is used in the testing for ammonia or ammonia ions right so this is about those then another important catalyst you should know is called as the lindler catalyst okay lindler catalyst it is basically pd baso4 that is palladium and a and baso4 barium sulfate along with sulfur so it is used for the hydrogenation process okay so hydrogenation reactions this is a very very important cat catalyst then you should also know the composition of cement so cement is basically a mixture of limestone along with clay and gypsum now i absolutely do not need to tell you what the use is we all know it is basically used for construction purposes okay then next one as i was telling you oil gas okay oil gas is a mixture of h2 plus ch4 plus carbon monoxide plus carbon dioxide used as a lab fuel so a laboratory fuel then we have the next one that is called as power alcohol now power alcohol is basically a motor fuel so what it is composed of it is composed of 80% of petrol 20% ethanol and some trace amounts of benzene so this particular solution of all of this is called as a power alcohol okay so i guess i have covered most of the important things that are asked another small thing i like to add over here is another gas composition that is coal gas coal gas is a mixture of h2 methane carbon monoxide along with some other gases and the use of the coal gas is basically in the seal production okay during metallurgical operations so that it from me for today hopefully this will be helpful for you and stay tuned to for my further videos to get more information